from Seattle, Washington, John Gunther. From Columbus, Ohio, a great television performer, Joe Kristoff. from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, here at the Major League Lane, Fred Wolf with two more of our field of 24 of the nation's outstanding bowling stars in their first appearance. Each of these stars appears twice against a different opponent each time. It's total pins for the six games, which will qualify our two finalists for a $15,000 added purse. Each match, $1,000 to the winner, $500 to the runner-up. This week, it's Joe Kristoff from Columbus, Ohio, Johnny Gunther from Seattle, Washington. All competition is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress, a 300 score worth $10,000 additional. We're ready for game number one of three total pins right after some words of interest to everyone. Joe Kristoff of Columbus winning the toss, selecting to start on the right side. That puts Johnny Gunther from Seattle, Washington, the youngster, on the left. All games start on the left. Gunther throws, looks too high, leaves the four. Born in Langdon, North Dakota in 1936, went out to Seattle, Washington in 1949. This youngster coming along beautifully and should develop into one of the nation's real great stars. He's appeared on championship bowling twice. For six games, he's averaging 213. At the four pin, Gunther covers. <laughs> now Joe Kristoff, one of the game's greatest stylists. This fella has rolled a 300 score on television in Chicago in 1955. Born in Toledo, Ohio in 1920. The big turn, but he doesn't get there. Misses the head pin, the one and the two. Joe went to Chicago in 46 and then to Columbus, Ohio in 1961. Operates his own pro shop in Columbus. Member of the Professional Bowlers Association and one of the big members of the AMF Staff of Champions. The one and the two, and Kristoff covers it. That's where he would have liked to have drawn the first one. So Kristoff now moves left. All competition, each game starting on the left side. That bowler bowls one frame, takes his seat. His opponent then moves in on the right. All activity going from our right to the left, from lane 28 back to lane 27. Here at the Major League Lanes, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Kristoff throws, looks good. He's there, he's got it. Boy, there was no doubt about that one. So Johnny Gunther now, moving in on the right side. Johnny has shot 7-10 on television. That's his high three-game series. Back in 1958, he beat Eddie Lebansky, another one of our stars. Eddie had 6-90. Big turns, got to hurry. He doesn't get there, and the boys continue to find the right side, lane 28, quite a challenge. Kristoff missed the head pin. Gunther did the same thing. So Kristoff now with a strike in the second in the advantageous position of getting the double to put him out in front as Gunther looks at the one, the two, and the four. Crossing, cover. <laughs> probably have already noticed AMF's revolutionary new spare maker that shows you the easiest way to convert any of the 1,023 possible spares, and that certainly should improve your score. 
Just look at the arrow and throw the ball right there. Making it easier for you. Gunther in the third. There it is. So the youngster rifles one in there and carries as Kristoff now in that position. The number two position. Number one, get your first strike. The second assignment, get a double. So Kristoff can do it right here. Willie, too high. Almost. The 6-7. Broke it up. Nothing but the six pin. So Johnny Gunther hangs on. And now John has the chance for the double as the boys are gentlemen here. And this, the first game of three. $1,000 to the winner. $500 to the runner-up. Both of these boys will make another appearance meeting a different opponent. And we've got some tough ones. There's the cover. You'll see fellas like Bobby Kowalik, who was the winner of championship bowling in Northbrook, Illinois, winning himself $10,000. Fellas like Billy Whalu, the great Dick Weber, Fred Lenning, Ed Lovansky, Pat Patterson, just to name a few of them. In the fourth, Kristoff throws. Look at that eight pin. Boy, he was in there. You can't hit him any better than, than that, and you may say, well, how come? Well, it's quite a mystery, really. I don't think uh, it can be explained. Many bowlers have an explanation, but nevertheless, they'll also tell you it shouldn't happen. That's what makes this game so interesting. Sometimes you get strikes that you don't expect, so it evens out. There's the cover. As Johnny Gunther now moves in in the fourth, Johnny is on the strike. A chance to take the lead. He trails by three pins. He's lost three pins in counts. And he lost them right here when he missed the head pin in the second. Now this is the fourth. He won't want to miss that head pin again. He'll make an adjustment. But he doesn't make much of an adjustment. And he misses the head pin again. The one, two, ten. It's called the washout. I always like to feel that this is a split, but according to ABC scoring, this is not a split. When the head pin remains standing, it is not a split. However, I think many of the boys would rather shoot at the 310 or even the 4-5 fit than to shoot at this one. Not enough. So Gunther has the first open frame of the match. Kristoff, by filling four frames, gets himself out in front by some 14 pins. It's the first game of three. All this competition is sanctioned by the ABC with brand new AMF tournament grade Chemweld pins being used. There it is. We don't make it too easy for the fellas. Real match game conditions. You've got to throw the ball. And it looks like here at Winston-Salem, you've got to crank them a bit, as Bill Bonetta told us. You can't float them. You've got to turn them. Here it comes. Oh, look at here. A solid 10 on top of a solid 8. So Joe Kristoff from Columbus, Ohio, hitting that pocket. It doesn't have too much to show for it. This fella has rolled 22 perfect scores. He got two 300s in a row in a match game in Chicago back in 1948. Shot a 300 game in the National Five-Man Team Elimination in 1949. Covers the spare. So at the end of five, we have Joe Kristoff out in front by 13 pins. One open frame. Gunther has it. That's the difference. That's at the end of five of game number one. Kristoff in the sixth frame, got to hurry, doesn't get there. And he has a washout, the same as Mr. Gunther showed us in the fourth. However, Joe has one more pin, which won't make too much difference. If he's going to make it, he'll kick the four. He's got to put the ball between the one and the two. A Brooklyn hit, and then hope that the head pin will hit the ten. Many times it'll sail right around it. So Kristoff, who has lost two good hits, now finds himself with a tough shot. He may have it, he may have it, and he went to the inside. The head pin hitting the sidekick and going in front of the 10. Both boys now have had an open frame. 
Gunther now with a chance to leap out in front in a hurry. He has trailed all the way. This strike will put him out there. John stands left of center, plays just right of center. On the Brooklyn side, does not carry the 6-10. Johnny Gunther, who is the manager of a West Coast bowling establishment, rolled his first sanctioned 300 score in March of 1959. 6'10", he covers. Johnny shot 1891 in 1959 for six games in a Seattle tournament, which still stands as the third highest in ABC sanctioned competition. 1891 for six games. That's quite a few. As a matter of fact, Gunther with a strike. As a matter of fact, that's too many. Must be for eight games. He'd be averaging about 3, 320, that'd be too much. 1891 for eight games. Kristoff, too high, leaves the four, seven. That's about a 236 average for eight games. For six games, it'd be about 310 average. No, we'll forget that. Kristoff covers the 4-7. We're at the end of seven. Gunther out in front. The margin just two pins as Kristoff moves to the left. In the Chicago series of championship bowling, Joe Kristoff had games of 255, 277, and 246 for 778. There we are. which is the second highest total, three-game total, on record for championship bowling. Glenn Allison has the high three, 782 shot in Toledo, which included a 290 game. Gunther now on the right side, side that keeps the boys busy. On a strike, throws, looks like he's there. There we are. Now, Gunther made a move, uh, moving slightly to the outside, going, uh, just outside the second diamond. He has been playing inside of the second diamond from an inside angle, trying to bring it back. He floated that one from the outside for the double to add to his margin. We go into the ninth. Both boys on strikes. Gunther is on two. Chance for 225. And here it comes. There it is. So the young fellow from the West Coast, Seattle, Washington, begins to line them out here now, sitting by, watching his opponent, Joe Kristoff, on the right side. Joe needs this one to stay in here. That's better. Oh, another solid 10. So Kristoff has had an 8 and two tens solid, and that one really hurt him. He was on a strike. You can't put that ball in that pocket any better than that. lane, 10 pin, covered up. So we go into the big 10th, and the youngster from the West Coast out in front, he has a margin of about 22 pins. He sits on a triple, Kristoff goes into the 10th on a spare. Now, maybe you don't realize it, but in many high schools and colleges, bowling is offered as part of the physical education program. So you see, bowling is good for you, as well as being fun. So let's get with it. Here's Kristoff. This is the head pin, the one, two. That's not much fun for a fellow like Kristoff. But whether you're six or 60, get out, try it. See your neighborhood bowling proprietor. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment. He's got it. You can relax, have some fun, and it's healthful recreation. 
take it from me. I've enjoyed it for 30 years. There's the cover, the one two. So Kristoff has rolled a very strong 180 game here. He has lost three beautiful hits. Missed a head pin here in the 10th, and he missed a head pin in the first frame. So Joe has uh, lost three solid hits, and he has missed the head pin three times. There it comes. 10 pin this time. That one not too damaging. So Johnny Gunter now with $1,000 hanging out in front of him here is going to try to get as many as he can. He may need the cushion before this one is over. A chance for 225. He has five strikes. Five strikes in nine frames. This one will get there. There's another one. Well. Gunther has made quite a move, and he stayed with it. That's the same angle he showed us in the eighth frame. Be interesting now to see if he can stay there for the next two games. With Seattle's bowler of the year, the perennial bowler of the year up there. He's the best they've got. Look out! Fourth pin, just a bit high. Well, he didn't miss his mark by very much. He started with a solid four pin. And he finishes with a solid four pin. And he's going to take about 34 pins into the second game. Something to work on for that $1,000. So for Gunther, it's 214 for Kristoff, 180. We'll be back for the second game of three here on Championship Bowling from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is Fred Wolf. We'd uh, like to invite you now to see what our hosts have to say. The scores for the first game of three for Joe Kristoff, 180. For Johnny Gunther, 214, a lead of 34 pins, two games to go. $1,000 still waiting for the winner. Winston-Salem, North Carolina, are you all ready? All right, here we go. Joe Kristoff moving in for the start of game number two. Championship bowling from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Fred Wolf from the Major League Bowling Lanes. Kristoff is a little tight. Kicks the 4-7. Very effective ball as Johnny Gunther moves in on the right side. The youngster from Seattle, Washington. Making his third appearance on championship bowling. For six games, he's been averaging 213 in two previous appearances. Winds one up, here he comes. Four pin again, that's how he ended the first game. Got his first strike in the 10th. Then a solid four. He's got a very good line here on the right side, the best we've seen in the field so far. Throws a very strong ball. By that I mean in quite a lot of speed. It's a fingertip, he gets the big lift, and he covers the spell. Actually, uh, Johnny's ball uh, doesn't have the extreme wide span that many of the fingertip uh, boys have. He has a semi-fingertip that is uh, a bit on the wide side, but he uses his finger holes as a fingertip grip. He buries the thumb, sort of shortens, up, shortens it up in the palm of his hand, a solid 10. Well, the boys have been hitting them, but uh, Winston-Salem's a bit stubborn here. Got to kick them loose. So Gunther loses a four and a 10. A lead of 34 pins. Kristoff sits on a strike. There's the cover. There's Joe Kristoff moves in on the right side. Joe looking for his first double. Joe's high three games on television, 785, including a 300 score. That's the ball, four pin is out again. So Joe has shown us a couple of good ones, kicking that 4-7 out of there. That's, uh, that's what you call a very effective ball. Kristoff moves left on two. Hey, look at here now, a solid seven. Oh, this fella has hit that pocket pretty good. 
Let's say his percentage of carry has not been too good. He's missed the head pin three times. However, he has had a solid eight, three solid tens, and now a solid seven on a double. There's the cover. So that gives Johnny Gunther some life as Joe shakes his head. Can't understand how that could happen. Gunther on the right. That's the place. Ten pin. He hit it. Johnny was the 1962 winner of the Big Pin Classic out in Salt Lake City. A tournament that John has done very well in over the years. When he was only 19, he shot an 809 total, which is the second highest in Pacific Coast history. There he is. He covers the spare. Got his start as a pin boy. Not too many of the boys are getting starts as pin boys anymore, not with automatic pin spotters. We have a couple of real youngsters in our field this year. Ron Winger from Los Angeles and Dave Sutar, the young Detroiter. And this young fellow, Johnny Gunther. We're going to keep the big boys busy as championship bowling introduces new names, men that will be our great stars in the very near future. And fellas like Joe Kristoff are going to have to keep moving. In the fourth, Joe throws too high. This time he didn't kick the 4-7. He got the 7 out of there. But he was right near the bucket. That's four in a row that he's put in there. That went a bit high. up to 310. Correct that. Kristoff is leading by 10 pins in the second game. He lost the first game by 34. It's Gunther by 24. We are just about halfway. Kristoff here in the fifth frame of game number two. Gunther sitting on a strike. So he can add 10 pins to that margin if he can cash one here. So Johnny, looking down, getting that left foot where he wants it, got his spot picked out, five steps, and away he goes, and he wants this one, and here it comes, and he's got it. Oh, that was a beautiful ac action, getting it out over the foul line and coming in for the big double. So at the end of five, in game number two, we're halfway, it's still Johnny Gunther out in front of Joe Kristoff. He's on two. Will it be three? It is three. So Gunter filing them up beautifully, throwing two of the finest balls you can possibly throw, and he came, has carried them. And of course, this Kristoff fella has lost some real tough ones. A solid seven on a double. You always look at the four or the ten, and when you see that seven, it just jumps up there at you. You can't believe that you're seeing it. Joe loses three more pins in counts, the two, four, five. We can go back as far as 1948 when we watched Kristoff shoot a 300 game in national match game team competition against Detroit. And Joe shaking his head, he almost left the four pin up there. He was right in the middle. So Kristoff not taking any chances going out too far. The 2-4-5, we're in the seventh. Gunther piling up a big lead. Too high, wide open. 4-10. Well, that's the tendency when you're short. You like to make a correction. 
And an overcorrection results in something like this. Joe is one of the many fellows who have gone to uh, tucking in his pinky, his little finger, under the palm of his hand and letting the back of the little finger rest on the ball. He takes a crack at it, but of course uh, does not go far enough to the left, so Kristoff is open in the seventh with 131, and the youngster from Seattle, Washington, steps up on a big triple. Will it be four? Right there. Johnny Gunther who has shown us four perfect strikes in succession. There was no doubt about either one of them. And going back in this, the second game, he started with a four pin, then two 10 pins, and now he carries four. So he's had seven in there, started with 214, went into the, into the tenth frame on three, got the first one, then left a four pin solid. So he straightened himself out in great shape. We're in the eighth. He throws, hurry. He gets there, and look at that exit. Johnny Gunther who is showing us a great right arm, a strong right arm, and a very fine line, as Joe Kristoff now must realize that he's got a tiger by the tail here. And Joe has got to make a big move fast. In the eighth, Joe throws too high. Three, six. Joe started bowling, or got acquainted with the game, actually, back in 1934. He used to watch his mother and father bowl went in Toledo. Joe attended uh, high school in Toledo, then to Chicago, and now Columbus, Ohio. There's the cover. So Joe moves to the left with a chance for 211. He's got to go all the way. He started this game with a double, left a solid seven, and that seemed to uh, take a little wind out of Joe's sails. He lost three good hits the first game, came back with a four pin, Hasn't been near the pocket since. There's a 10 pin. He's back in the pocket, but still finding trouble with one stubborn pin. Be it the 10, the 8, or the 7, or the 4. He's had them all. You notice uh, how Joe drops his head. He's looking down at the approach to make sure that he's in the right spot. There's the spare. So now the youngster from Seattle, Washington, moves in on the right side. He will complete his game. He can get one here. He has every chance in the world for 268. He dropped it, but he may get away with it. He's there, he carries. Well, uh, Johnny, uh, making a funny little face back here with a half a smile. Uh, you probably heard that ball drop just a bit, but he had the line and he carried. And that's six in a row. And a big one coming up for the youngster from Seattle, Washington, Johnny Gunther, born in Langdon, North Dakota in 1936. A fellow you're going to hear a lot about. Once more. Ah, oh, look at that. Yes, sir. We have seen seven beautiful strikes. He's got 250 locked up. One more will give him 260. But John will be thinking about the finals. $15,000 added purse to top two men for six games and two appearances. Look at that. Oh, this fella just throws it in that one three pocket. That's eight in a row. One more will be his ninth. He started with three spares, and they were a four pin and two ten pins. And that's the way to get them in the first, second, or third frame. One of those ten pins in between a string of strikes would take 20 pins away from him. Once, four pin. That's all right. That's a good spot for that one. So young Johnny Gunther, the Seattle Washington match game champion, moves in with 267. That gives him 481. He will need 219 for 700.
He had six strikes the first game. Kristoff is high, leaves the three pin. Joe Kristoff, who was averaging 229 for 21 games on championship bowling. Steve Nagy, for 78 games, has the most number of games, carrying an average of 219 at the three pin. Lou Campy for 45 games, averaging 219. You'll see Lou here in our field of 24 of these great stars. Too high again, a seven pin count for 186. So in game number two, Kristoff, 186. Johnny Gunther, a great 267. This is Fred Wolf from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We'll give the boys a breather now and be back for the third and final game on championship bowling after our hosts have a message of interest to each and every one of you. Here are the scores for the second game. Joe Kristoff, 186, the total 366 for Johnny Gunther, finishing with eight strikes in a row for a very beautiful 267. Did you enjoy that game, ladies and gentlemen? Great exhibition. So for Gunther, Gunther 481, Kristoff 366. We're ready for the third and final game. Are you ready, men? Here we go. Johnny Gunther moving in on the left, the third and final game. John has a comfortable margin, but on his mind, get as many pins as he possibly can. He's thinking of the finals. He'll make another appearance, meeting a different opponent. Throws, look out, too high, breaks it up to 6'10". He had quite a string of pocket hits going for him. In the seventh frame of the first game, he started a string of four, left a four pin on his second in the tenth. Started the second game with a four pin, a bit high. Two solid tens, and then eight in a row, leaving the four pin on his final ball for 267. Too high here on his first ball. Covers the sixth head. John Gunther. Remember him in his next appearance. Here's Joe Kristoff. Only one thing left for Joe to do, and that is try to get a strike. Joe hits the pocket again. This time the four pin jumps up there at him. Joe has had every possible tap I believe you can get. He's had the eight, the four. He's had uh, five, ten pins. He covers, we move to the left now. As Joe Kristoff, the 1961 American Bowling Congress Classic Doubles Champion. Title he won with Don Ellis at Cobo Hall in Detroit. Too high, breaks it up, six bit. Competition sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. Brand new AMF. Tournament grade Kemwell Bin. Might be interested, each of these bowling pins are registered to ensure matched weights in each set. This is the same pin that produced five perfect scores at the BPAA All-Star in 1962 in Miami Beach. Just like that. So Gunther's back in that one-three pocket. So Johnny's gonna raise his championship bowling average a bit. He went into this match averaging 213 for six games. Here he comes, there it is. Boy, oh, look at that angle. Gunther playing the left side, lane 27, slightly to the outside. Hitting the second diamond. 
from more of an outside angle, where on the right side, lane 28, he's playing about the same diamond, but <laughs> going slightly around it. Now, Christoph cranked one up instead of trying to float it in there. He gave it the Gunther delivery, and that ball moved in a hurry. Joe, it looks like he may finish this game bowling with abandon, as the boys say. Just turn it. Let it go. Here it comes. Oh, he didn't get enough on that one, the 2-5. It got away from him. So Gunther piles them up. Johnny knows he's got this match locked up, winning $1,000. Now he's got to put together three more good ones in his next appearance to put him in that 1-2 spot and a chance to win the big $10,000 and the championship of championship bowling in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. List off covers. And Gunther moves in on the right side. The pride and joy of Seattle, Washington. A real comer. Gotta hurry, John. Oh, he moved inside on that one. He lost his spot entirely. Sitting just to John's right, Three or four of our group of 24 bowlers, Fred Lenning from Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania, and the Shrimp from Milwaukee, Little Ray Shannon, Big Bill Bonetta, and our alternate Joe Donato from Schenectady. There's the cover for Gunther as he moves left. So Gunther has himself a nine-pin margin in this game number three. As far as the three-game total is concerned, with six frames to go, John is thinking now of a triple for 700. He needs a turkey. He has six frames to get it, if he can stay away from any opens. He's right back. Four pin jumps up there. He's been popping him in there in great shape. the cover. So Joe Kristoff now with a chance to redeem himself. A string of strikes here can pull him out. There's always room for the 700 on your second appearance. Too far out, Joe. He got a piece of the head pin. That's all. The 245. Joe's looked at this one a couple of times. Just going around too too much here on the right side. Gunther's taking that short shortcut. Although in the last frame he got inside where the ball seems to want to hang. There it is. And that's right where the spare maker uh, tells you to cover the spare. So at the end of five, Gunther 87 spare, Kristoff 76 spare. We're in the sixth, game number three, Kristoff. He gives that one a crank, and he gets in there. Joe Kristoff reaching out, following through, good lift, and a fine strike. And we haven't seen Joe do that too many times. Although he is rolled two strong 180 games when you figure that he's lost two or three key hits in each game. Here's Gunther in the sixth, needs a triple. He winds it, doesn't get there again. He has the two pin. So Gunther getting a little careless here on the right side. John's been a member of the all West Coast team six times. Has appeared many times on television out on the West Coast, especially in Seattle. Was quite a ball player. In fact, he played semi-pro ball. He's an outfielder. He could really go get him. Very fast. Good arm in the seventh. It's Gunther leading by ten pins. Four frames to go. He needs that big turkey for the 700. Would put him in a select class as we go down our field of 24 of the nation's top stars. A total of 12 matches. You'll meet the entire field. 
They all return meeting different opponents for their second appearance. There it is. And the two bowlers with the highest six game totals qualify for the finals, which will be a six game test over two weeks. The winner receiving $10,000, the runner up $5,000, and beautiful trophies, emblematic of this great competition. Championship bowling from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, here at the Major League Lanes. Kristoff leaving the six. You know, the Peace Corps is an opportunity to serve and to learn. It's a two-way street, really, a way to help other people and to help oneself by gaining enriching experience. Now, to apply for Peace Corps service or for information about specific opportunities in different fields and countries, write to Peace Corps, Washington 25, D.C. Well, Joe's still going around. And he's not coming back. He has a cluster of five. Shoot the half, Joe. He's got the bucket with a man in motion. A five pin count. This is a tough shot. You can leave the five, you can leave the seven, you can leave the eight. Kristoff gets the ball. And Johnny Gunther now, this is it. If he gets this one, he needs one in the ninth for 700. If he doesn't get this one, he can still get his three in the ninth and 10th. John shuffles a bit, moves back, winds it up. Now he's out there, but he gives it too much, too much, four pin. That was his line. He got back outside where he has been, but he gave that one just a little too much. That ball moved in a hurry. So John now, to get that 700, will have to strike in the ninth and get two in the tenth. There's still room. He has 481 going in. Games of 214 and 267, he covers. Now <laughs> well, this is Gunther's last chance for the select total of 700. If he gets it, it's there, he's got it. Now he needs two more in a tenth. So he's got himself uh, 490 right now, 480 going in, let's say 690, 687 with a spare, 690 with one strike, 700 with two is Kristoff in the ninth. There you are, Joe. So Kristoff now beginning to probably learn a thing or two. And when this fellow makes his second appearance, I think you'll find uh, things will change a bit. And Joe might make it pretty tough on his opponent in the second round. In the tenth, a chance for 2-11. He's just liable to get it, too. Nice delivery. This fellow does it the easy way. I'm sure you've been noticing here in the past three games, he goes up there like he shouldn't ever make a mistake. Where's the bowler's glove? Semi-fingertip. Tucks the little finger in, reaches, throws. There's another one. Well, Joe is probably wondering how come he's carrying the strikes now after it's all over. He could have used a few of those in the first two games. He had three ten pins the first game. He had a solid seven, a solid four, and a solid ten in the second game. Gets himself nine for two ten. So Fiskoff uh, finishes like he may be starting in his next appearance is Johnny Gunther now with 700 knocking on the door. The opportunity is there. Let's see if Mr. Gunther can open the door. He needs two strikes. 
You can go all the way for 707. Look out. Too high. Six pin. So John uh, lost the right side entirely. And he's been doing a lot of fishing. In the fourth, he missed the head pin. In the sixth, he didn't get up there. In the eighth, he was a bit high with a four pin. This time, right in the middle with a six pin. So the cop will give him 206 and a fine performance, 687 for the youngster from Seattle, Washington, the Washington State Match Game Champion. Another one of the many youngsters that are beginning to let the older fellas know that youth must be served. Hey, he only got six pins. He may be looking for those four. Johnny threw one away, counting the six for 202. Now we'll total them up. We'll make them official. Right now, Fred Wolf from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, here at one of the Major League bowling lanes. Now we'll see you right after these words. Here are the final results for Joe Kristoff, 180, 186, and 210 for a total of 576. For Johnny Gunther, 214, a great 267, a 202 finish. The winner with 683, Johnny Gunther from Seattle, Washington. How about that? <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Congratulations. You. Thank you, Freddie. $1,000 for that fine performance. Thank and you. And Joe, runner-up, $500. Thank you. I made the slight remark up there, Joe, about youth being served. I know that you've been around for a long time, uh, almost as long as I have. Uh, what are we going to do? These kids are getting pretty tough, aren't they? Yes, they sure bowled beautiful, too. I'll tell you, he held a line real good there. Um, I believe that on a couple of shots, he just drifted very slightly. He'd have had 700 easily. You think beautiful. so? John, you're going to make another appearance, and you are too, Joe. You have a chance to redeem yourself, and you finished in great shape. You won the last game, you know that. Thanks. <laughs> uh, John, you had 18 strikes, which has been uh, pretty good, the way they've been going here. And uh, in your next appearance, if you can put together another 267 and a couple of small 200s, you might be around here for the finals. I'd like to, Fred. We'd like to see you. For $10,000, it'll yeah, be worth yeah. your while, won't it? Yes, it Ladies will. and gentlemen, let's give them both a nice hand. A great performance. <laughs> good luck to you. Now, don't go away, folks, because we'll have the doctor of bowling, Mr. Lee Juglard, right after these words. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Lee Juglard, known as the, what is it, the doctor of bowling or, or the... Bowling doctor. The well, bowling he, doctor. Either one. Either one. Either one. Satisfy. Lee, you're going to be with us here uh, during this series in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, to pass along some fine bowling tips that I'm sure the bowlers are interested in. And I think we ought to start it off by... Uh, letting some of our non-bowlers know something about the equipment. I mean, do you have to go out and spend a lot of money to get in this game? Or Well, Fred, I think that bowling is probably one of the least expensive sports to get into because the non-bowler, if he were walking into an establishment, could go to the desk and rent a pair of shoes, go to the storage rack and select a bowling ball, so actually there would be no cost involved. But I would suggest and strongly recommend to the newcomers and the beginners at their first opportunity to really get their own equipment because it is very important. Uh, their own bowling shoes, naturally you can be more comfortable, you can be more consistent, and with your own bowling ball there are so many things to take into consideration. The size of the holes, the weight, the span, I mean, it is very essential that you do get your own equipment. Now what are we talking about here money-wise? How much, for instance, I, I decide I want a bowling ball? Uh, AMF, an Amflight ball, how much does this cost me? From $25 up, Fred. It's very inexpensive. In fact, for the whole outfit, the bowling ball, bag, and shoes, you can go from $35 up. And I think that, for a major competitive sport, is very attractive. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. It's very easy. Lee, we'd like to have you back on our next show well, and thank the you very much, shows, Fred. and we want to get some of that fine information out of you. You know so much about the game, and uh, we want to pass it along to our viewers. Thank you Thank very much. You. Lee Juglard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, that about lines it up. We hope you can join us again next week here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for another championship bowling match. We'll have two more of our great field of 24 of the nation's top stars in action, $60,000 in prizes. Until then, Fred Wolf saying keep them bowling out there.
matching shirts and slacks used on championship bowling by King Louie. Championship Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress, and we wish to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us to produce Championship Bowling. <laughs>